Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. What I got for you today is El Diablo, the devil, as the uh, obstacle. Some may think this is a pretty big obstacle. Um, and then the Five of Pentacles this is the opportunity, this this miserable looking card. So let's, uh, let's get into it here. Um, the devil, what can we say about this card? Well, if you're watching this video in some underground BDSM nightclub, it's time to leave and go home. That's what this card is saying. <laughs> now, um, it's, um, I think, I think there's a couple interesting ways to interpret this card. It's one of my favorite cards. There's, it's very rich symbolically. And, uh, it's almost like, a the weight version is almost like a step down in terms of its symbolism from the uh, Marseille deck, um, which is interesting considering often weight, you know, s stepped up the symbolism. But I think one of the, one of the important aspects of this is that the, the devil has these bat wings. The background is all black. He's got a torch darkness this is this is an individual that exists underground underwater in the deep in the deep dark subconscious full of chaos all the good things about chaos all the chaotic opportunity endless boundless opportunity but also a complete lack of order um and i see the i see the devil as a type of usher or guide into this realm going down and down through the psyche into the subconscious into the id down into the the primal the primal human drives you know the, the sexual very just raw desires and instincts and uh generally i see this card as as being pretty good especially for artists i think it's i think it's a sign that you know you're going to be able to tap into some deep unconscious dreamlike inspiration um in this case it being an obstacle we got to do some creative thinking here one of the things that um i can i think you know speak from experience as as something that this card reminds me of is there are certain individuals that i've encountered in life who having descended themselves to the depths um and, and and not not just descended to the depths, but people who have gone down into the darkness and who are altered by it in a not exactly enlightening way. Some people went down there and they, they got scarred. They got a little broken. Often they'll come back up and they'll try and they'll try and seduce other people, often their their friends. Um, not people that they are themselves, let's say, sexually interested in, but people that they might consider their equals, roughly, often people that they're, that they're jealous of, that they see as being superior because they themselves have not descended to the depths. Often these, you know, agents of temptation will, will describe all of the amazing aspects of going into the depths, of going to some weird illegal after hours orgy party teeming with drugs or whatever you know and and in a sense they're they're not lying because these types of places these types of experiences can be extremely enlightening you know provided they don't overtake you provided that you can you can appreciate those kinds of experiences in a way that's also balanced with you know super ego high conscientious kind of outlooks on life but i think one of the things this card reminds me of is that kind of agent of temptation that wants to take you down into these depths will lure you there with accurate descriptions of all the positive aspects but will fail to share with you the the negative consequences for having gone down into those murky depths and then we'll take you down there and whether it's a conscious thing for them or a subconscious one, they will try and take you down there and corrupt you to bring you to their level. 
um, this this could be a dangerous type of individual to certainly be avoided or you know you want to just yeah be careful around individuals like this so that's one interpretation another thing in both of these cards there's a lot of horns everyone has horns and uh one of the other aspects of this card that i like is it seems like especially in the marseille deck it seems like the the horns on the kind of humanoid characters are maybe they're like hats or something that have been put on like the, they're disguising themselves as animals in some way they're playing the role of animals to tap into this bestial pl primal sexual behavior and energy which as far as um many you know cult rituals in include this dressing up as animals to tap into that raw chaotic energy but one of the things that I find particularly interesting with with horns is in the fact that a lot of animals that have horns i don't think all of them although i i could do some research but i know that a lot of animals that have horns only have horns to facilitate the kind of competitions that happen during often it's during spring and it'll be the the male members of the species will fight each other to figure out who the the top male is that will get control over a territory often um animals where a single male will have like a whole harem of females you know um so they fight over they fight over who gets to have access to the to the females of the species but the horns are specific uh it's it's hard to use the word intentional when talking about evolution but the horns have evolved so that these animals could attack each other pretty ferociously but not really cause each other that much harm they they don't really endanger each other's lives that much it's this it's this evolved weaponization of the body that it's you know rubber bullets like they'll fuck you up they'll hurt you you'll be in pain one of you is going to give up first. You're going to be like, all right, all right, you win. But you're still walking away alive. You're still walking away in a condition where you could you could still go and hunt. You could still, you know, you're not going to be getting any girlfriends that year, but you could go forward. And I think that one of the things this card points at, both in the positive and, and potentially negative warning sense, is that um, as, as contemporary modern uh, human beings, we have a lot of horn-like cultural appendages that we've invented or involved there's a lot of fashion there's a lot of status symbols that effectively give us this ability to compete amongst each other for you know often for men to compete amongst each other for women to compete amongst each other to figure out who the uh, quote-unquote alpha is and i think this card could also be a symbolic warning against getting too preoccupied with the pursuit of having you know the shiniest most up-to-date horns made by the most fashionable designer of the of the time you know um, that it could be that kind of that that kind of distraction could be at play um, and then five of pentacles yeah this is just it's interesting that these are both these are both kind of fives like the 15 of the devil it's it's the similar uh, it's the same degree of the numerological way of counting through the cards here but so we got fives does the uh does the marseille card go this way or this way we don't know it's the only suit it's the only numbered suit that doesn't indicate a number anywhere which i've i've spent quite some time pondering with the uh you know what the the intended meaning behind this choice of whoever was creating these was are these meant to be counted ourselves you know um but anyway looking at this card we got these two destitute characters one of them not only has a busted up leg uh, he's on crutches but also if you look closely he's got this bell around his neck which i suspect is some sort of bell that maybe people with leprosy or some sort of infectious disease were forced to wear to warn others around them so this guy is just he's not having a good time 
and uh, the other person with him, I believe there's some bandage around the ankle, and they, you know, the the character in the red cloak, they look like they're cold. This black background with these white spots, and the white ground looks like snow, so they're probably cold, miserable. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty bad card. It seems to often... I feel like a lot of first reactions to this, uh, the first sort of empathic reactions to this is they're outside in the cold suffering. Meanwhile, there's this building, which is often interpreted as a church because of the stained glass windows. Um, it's a church, and inside the church, we've got this, we've got this bright light, you know, warmth shining through. It's nice and warm and orderly inside and outside. It's, it's miserable. Um, I think one of the things the, this card represents is these characters exist. They're, they're walking through the snow. The snow is white. Um, the color white in the color mantic interpretation is order, you know, but a very rigid kind of order. It's an order that's very difficult to break out of. It's almost a, a critical, it's a critical kind of, of mass that demands revolution, but is just very, you know, it, it traps you. It's like uh, society can be really well ordered at a certain point to the degree where everyone is essentially a slave or an inmate to that society. There's no freedom because that's how well organized it is. So it's, it's often indicative of, of that type of order. And I feel like the, the world in which they exist has that amount of order and it's it's because of the it's because of all the suffering that they're enduring that they are you know in terms of in terms of how the the suit of pentacles represents resources tangible things of value you know food money shelter warmth like all, all these a home food resource all these kinds of things uh, physical, physical security and resources. These people have none of it. They're cold. They don't have a home. They probably don't have any money. Physically, they're broken and ailing and diseased. And, and this is the, this is the path they walk. It's, this is the, the order of their life is made, is made up entirely. It's entirely defined by them lacking in all these different things. And then in the background, there's this what could be this church and if you if you ignore the snow it looks like it's this black structure right which again similar to the uh to the the devil card you know the it's blackness the unknown the void chaos opportunity it could be could be anything right um uh, it seems like they're walking past this window it's pretty tough to it's pretty tough to imagine where exactly are they going there's no door pictured in the card and they definitely don't look like they're going into the church but are they walking past the window to head to the church are they walking away from the door are they just passing it by leaving it behind the fives are often a card of transformation again as is let's say you know it's accurate read on this card as well the devil is an individual who invites who invites us to transform ourselves to, to travel down to this lower dimension of instincts, you know, most of the five cards indicate some sort of journey or a crossing. And I think that looking at the neighboring cards, there's something interesting to um, maybe contextualize here. It kind of looks like they're walking away from the queen of pentacles and they're walking towards the six of pentacles. The queen of pentacles, she's a queen. She represents really great management of the suit. So I think she represents very good management of resources. I think often she, to me, she evokes the image of a, a master gardener or farmer, someone who can just, someone who could tame nature and get the maximum amount of resources out of the earth 
who can farm in the most sustainable, efficient fashion, who can who can manage these resources. I think she's the uh, I think she's the representation of the ultimate economist in the in the classical sense or in the in the like economics as it as it stands to be interpreted from its its original you know uh, language Latin I believe could be Greek forgive me for not knowing the exact one I believe it's Latin um, economics it's it's home management, right? Like usually when we talk talk about economics, we're talking about management of, of the state or of the country or whatever. But um, but I feel like the Queen of Pentacles is the ideal economic agent. She perfectly not only acquires the resources, but is perfect at managing them. But she's also, you know, she's a queen. She's this, she's kind of monarch, right? So I think... I think she could be representative of something like an ideal welfare system that, you know, distributes, perfectly distrib distributes resources to its individuals. And yet, nonetheless, these characters are, are walking away from it. And they're, they're walking towards the six, which I interpret as also another very generous character. Like, I imagine the, I mean, we don't see the queen actively g giving out you know her uh, her pentacles but um that's kind of my interpretation of someone who's good at managing that um this individual is also you know he's donating to people that are you know destitute They're, these people are begging for money he's handing out money but he seems to me like a private individual he doesn't he doesn't seem to me like uh like some sort of government entity if anything there's two different ways, I think, to interpret the fact that he's holding a set of scales. One of them is that he's weighing out how much each individual deserves, which, hey, if he's being charitable, that's his business. He can, you know, he can, he can make that decision for himself, in my opinion. Um, certainly not something that the queen should be doing, right? She should be supporting all of her subjects equally. Um, but another interpretation for the scales that this individual is holding, I think, is that he's a merchant. He's someone who uses the scales on a regular basis to conduct his business. And so you've got, you've got the queen representing some sort of uh, a lord-like oath and responsibility to her subjects. And the six representing someone who is willingly being charitable because they decided to do so themselves. And I think that these might represent two different ideas of how these these poor, out-of-luck, destitute individuals in the five could possibly relate with, you know, if if your whole existence is this kind of suffering and lacking of of resources. It can be it could be difficult to interact with individuals who maybe have all the things you need and want and to be on the receiving end. And speaking from personal experience as someone who spent time on the street, spent time being completely broke and often relying on, on uh, the kindness of, of strangers to, you know, to literally survive. I can tell you that often it's, it's not easy to, to be in that position, in that relationship where you have nothing and someone has something. And then I think that maybe these people are making the transition from being, being destitute or at least shifting their, shifting the, uh, how can I put it? Shifting their focus from interacting with individuals who might be charitable towards them because it's their responsibility and it's what they get in exchange for them being subjects of that in individual versus someone who can charitably decide of their own free will to to give to people and therefore may or may not involve some sort of judgment in the value of those individuals that they're either giving or not giving to um it's the last card the five it's the last card in the in the earth square of cards that represents earthly concerns, physical concerns, you know, tangible 
physical resources. Um, and the and the six, the next card is the first card in the sequence of the of the sort of heavenly spiritual, you know. Uh, yeah, just more along the the spirit of money and resources, the ideas, the the higher ideas that that eventually emerge. So I think this is a I think this is a transition of either either transitioning from the way you think about resources as this from this physical thing that's just there to provide food and shelter and warmth to to something that's a little bit more you know uh, has has more has more purpose has more spiritual or philosophical intent behind it not just money for the sake of the most basic needs but money for money for recognition of ideas or values again one of the things about the uh, the six that's interesting is that this individual is we see him being charitable to the character on the left which is dressed in yellow as opposed to the character on the right being dressed in blue and blue indicates you know moral values spirituality culture and yellow represents uh, thoughts ideas reasoning the intellect so this person that's being charitable is you know they're making some sort of selection here they're saying that to them um, ideas even though they don't have the kind of tangible value it's it's not you know an idea isn't a piece of gold it's not a five dollar bill it's not a loaf of bread it doesn't have that tangible reality to it but nonetheless this is kind of implying that th ideas are things of value beliefs are things of value he's particularly choosing you know ideas over morals or beliefs or cultural axioms which i don't i'm not sure why he's doing that i kind of think i would have chosen the other way but um could have something to do with that little scrap of red the blue cloaked figure is possibly concealing in their pocket but yeah anyway so i think i think this card symbolizes a, a transition from appreciating money just as a very basic resource that could just provide you with the the raw necessities of life to seeing to seeing value in other things to seeing value in ideas value that would be on par with you know we used to consider tangible valuable items um and i'm gonna wrap it up there so yeah careful descending into the darkness or individuals that might tempt you to go down there even though the value that they might offer is very real and opportunity co to consider um value existing in things other than money and resources but you know potentially things like opportunities new ideas the the creative expressions maybe art um that's it thanks for watching hit the like button if you had a nice time feel free to leave a comment random comment drawn at the end of the week on sunday gets a free one-on-one -on -one tarot card reading so feel free to get in on that while supplies last thanks for watching and i'll talk to you tomorrow